Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, team. My name is Ray Mason. I'm the director of Army Emergency Relief. And we're here today to talk about the annual campaign. And I'm joined here by my battle buddy. Charles, why don't you introduce yourself? My name is Charles Durr, and I serve as the chief of assistance for Headquarters Army Emergency Relief. I'm a retired soldier as well, spent 30 years in uniform. And me and my uh, four battle buddies uh, are really the primary interface of this organization in terms of interfacing with the 219 plus AE officers around the world. Great, Charles. I've been with AER about four years. And uh, I tell you, I feel very honored and blessed to, uh, to be in this position and have the opportunity to give back to our Army what it gave me and my family so much over my 35 years on active duty. The goal of the campaign is 100% of soldiers and their families informed about the programs and benefits of AER. Those that, that Sergeant Major Durr uh, with his other uh, Sergeant Major teammates does, but, but most importantly, the teammates in the field. So Charles, talk a little bit about the team that's out in the field out there that you work with every day. So, sir, again, we have uh, 219 plus AER officers at 72 locations around the world. We provide the policy guidance. We really help them in really uh, facilitating the financial assistance process. Uh, and I'd like to just extend a, a thank you to uh, our magnificent AER officers, as well as the garrison commanders and command sergeants major that we work very closely with in managing this program at the local level. So just a magnificent team out there uh, that lean forward every day to assist soldiers and families. Yeah, let me add my thanks to the senior commanders with the garrison leadership, uh, really tough job. They're running cities and all that goes on with it. So my thanks to the garrison commander and Sergeant Major and their staff, they're the ones that really oversee the AER program in the field. And then certainly to those 200 plus Army Emergency Relief officers that are part of MCOM, we work closely with them. Uh, they're really at the point of the spear. They're out there every day talking to soldiers and family members. So my hat's off to them. But again, what's today all about? This is the 79th annual campaign, Army campaign about AER. And uh, so we've been around since 1942. And in those almost 80 years, over 4 million uh, soldiers, your brothers and sisters, have been helped through AER uh, to the tune of about $2 billion in assistance, about a billion of that since 9-11. And so where did that money come from? Where did those $2 billion come from? It came from you. The vast majority of those dollars were donated by soldiers. We do get some money for some corporations and American citizens that just love our army and love soldiers. Uh, but vast majority of it came from you. And so our motto is soldiers helping soldiers. Charles, why don't you talk a little bit about the different programs and the different structures we have, loans, grants, so on and so forth, and, and some of the highlights in there, if you would, please. Yes, sir. So soldiers coming in to request assistance, we offer zero interest loans and grants and a combination of a loan and grant when appropriate. When the soldier's budget dictates, we can go to a full grant. Uh, we have over 30 different categories of assistance to assist members of the Army team, uh, things like... Uh, initial rent and deposit, uh, utilities, POV repairs, a replacement vehicle. We have medical, special medical needs categories that we can assist with. Uh, mercy travel is another one that we assist with. Some of our COVID specific programs for active duty soldiers, uh, as you know, that soldiers are challenged at, at, at our army installations and even off our army installations with finding appropriate child care. Some of the CDCs have shut down on and off posts. So we've implemented a COVID child care relief program. We've also partnered with uh, some of the other military service organizations to be able to assist soldiers. And so we provided $3 million to the National Military Family Association to be able to help soldiers uh, with unbudgeted, unforeseen child care expenses. We also implemented a homeschool and remote education assistance program. So many different programs out there to be able to help for COVID uh, situations. Also tutoring assistance is another one I like to highlight. We provide up to $3,000 for tutoring assistance to help children meet their educational goals when they're away from the classroom. This is a one team approach, but particularly during COVID, we expanded eligibility to the Reserve and National Guard soldiers who are in support of COVID relief efforts for things like BLE. Uh, we were able to help with dignified storage of remains. We were able to help with family SGLI uh, and TRICARE payments for those soldiers who could not 
make their ballot assemblies for due to cancellations rather. And so we've gone above and beyond to try to help our, our reserve and National Guard brothers as well. Yeah, and that's what we're, that's our mission. That's what we're supposed to do. Asking for help is a sign of strength. It's about resiliency. It's about combat readiness. So whatever you're struggling with, come see AER. We have a motto that says, just ask. We couldn't possibly think of all the things that might be going on in your particular life. It's also not going to come into AER. It's not going to affect your security clearances, your promotions. That's some urban legends that are there, and it's not true. I would I'd say another thing, Charles, talk a little bit about this relationship between the soldier and the company commander and first sergeant and why that's so important for AER. Yes, sir. So if you need assistance, your company commander and first sergeant should be the first folks that you go to to request uh, assistance or request help, and if the and if they can't help or, or if they, or if you don't feel comfortable with that, then you can always co go into the AER section and see the AER officer, and they can help point you in the right direction. So asking for help is a sign of strength, not weakness. And one program that what that we've really empowered the company commander and first sergeant with is what we call the Quick Assist program. The company commander and first sergeant Quick Assist program, where they can approve up to $2,000 to be able to take care of any short-term cash flow valid need that you have. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, go to your chain of command. Now, one other point I want Charles to make is about spouses. So we do want spouses to also be 100% informed. Charles, talk about a spouse coming to AER. How can a spouse come to AER if their military member uh, perhaps is deployed or off on a long-term training? So absolutely, sir. A spouse certainly can come into AER and request assistance if their sponsor is outside of the geographic area due to a deployment or a training exercise or TDY. They would need a special power of attorney. No worries if the spouse does not have a special power of attorney. We have an allotment authorization form where we can have the soldier digitally sign that and send that back to the AER section and the spouse can get assistance. Our AER officers are well versed on how to reach out to that service member, get that allotment authorization form and get the so the family member the assistance that uh, he or she needs. Thanks, Charles. If you donate five dollars for every five dollars you donate, we return fifteen dollars back to soldiers in terms of either loans, grants or scholarships. By the way, in 2020, we did over 14 million dollars in grant scholarships. Uh, for spouses and and uh, and children of military members, with COVID, we knew there was a lot of stress out there, and we wanted to help with that. We also did uh, about five million dollars just in grants uh, based on COVID need that's out there. You know, our motto and our creed in the Army is "Leave no comrade behind," and that is true on the battlefield, but it's also true back at home station. You've got battle buddies on your left and right that are hurting, and so when you donate, you're helping them. And so, again, I'm, I'm not as concerned about the amount you donate as the fact that you do it. Charles, anything else you'd want to say before we close out? Yes, sir. Just, just two closing points for me. We've looked back and converted over $1 million of a pandemic relief loans to grants. And the last point is that if you're not within a 50 mile radius of an Army installation, you can certainly go to any of our sister service relief societies to obtain assistance. If you're not within a 50 mile radius of any military installation, then we have a very important strategic partner known as the American Red Cross that is there 24 seven, 365 to be able to assist soldiers. Your funds are available to you 24 seven, 365. Thanks, Charles. We'll have a great campaign. Thanks for what you do every day for this nation. This nation is safe because of you. God bless you all. Stay safe out there. Thanks for taking, giving us some time to talk to you about the annual campaign and how important it is to the combat readiness of our army. Army strong, we'll see you, we'll see you on the high ground. Cool.